Hello girls and boys and welcome to the third session as we continue our exploration of the first 11 chapters of the book of Genesis. As you would have seen from the title slide, our reflections in this episode are on Noah and more importantly the covenant that God made with him. But before we get into the tragedy of the great flood, Let's take a few moments to reflect on our impression of who God is. We regularly see tragedies around us, the pandemic, the cyclones and storms, accidents, earthquakes, etc. You do find yourself saying or maybe hear someone in the family say, it is God's judgment and punishment. Or when for example you fight with someone, do you end it saying god will punish you i hope no elders in your family threaten you to undertake some task with a threat of god's punishment this somehow muddles our understanding of who god is making him look very vengeful and forever angry and punishing everyone we tend to forget of his love for us which was best manifest in the birth of his son for which we are right now preparing in the season of advent as a first part to today's reflection let's refresh our memory by looking at noah and the ark noah and the ark noah was a man who did what was right and obeyed god he had 3 sons shem Ham and Japheth However everyone else was disobeying God people were treating each other very badly God saw that the people he had created had become very wicked and violent God told Noah he was going to put an end to this wickedness by sending a flood to cover the earth but noah and his family would be spared noah was given instructions to build a big ark out of wood and cover it in waterproof pitch it was to be 450 feet long 75 feet wide and 45 feet high it would have three decks divided into rooms and a roof with a gap underneath for air to get in it would have one door on the side at once noah and his sons started to build the huge box shaped boat the wicked people around wondered what noah and his sons were doing when the ark was ready god told noah the flood would be coming in 7 days time noah his three sons and their wives were told to take their possessions aboard they stored food for the animals coming aboard too seven pairs of each clean animal and bird one male the other female were put into the ark two of every unclean animal were also taken on board unclean animals were those such as lizards moles pigs owls mice ferrets and ravens God then closed the door of the ark and the rain began to fall for 40 days it rained heavily rivers burst their banks and the flood waters got higher and higher as the waters rose the ark began to float the waters kept rising until they covered all the high mountains every living creature on land outside the ark was wiped out the water flooded the earth for 150 days but those on board the ark were kept safe as the flood water went down the ark came to rest on the mountains of ararat after 40 days noah sent out a raven but it found nowhere to land then he sent out a dove it flew around looking for land but it could find nowhere to perch and returned to the ark Noah stretched out his hand and brought it back into the ark. 
Seven days later, he sent the dove out again. Later that evening, it returned with a freshly plucked leaf. Noah knew the water was receding. A week later, he sent out the dove for a third time, but it did not return. Noah then knew that the dove had found land. Noah removed the roof of the ark and saw the land was drying out. Two months later, the land was dry enough for Noah, his family and the animals to leave the ark. Noah built an altar to the Lord and made sacrifices to him. God was pleased with the offering and promised never again to destroy all living creatures. As long as the earth endures, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night will never cease. God then put a rainbow in the sky. God then told Noah, This rainbow is the sign of my promise, never to flood the whole earth again. The flood narrative, as you saw, is a symbolic story bringing into focus that through sin, man is alienated from nature, that is, man is not at peace with creation. Man destroys God's plan of order and harmony on the earth. For us Christians, the flood is also an image of the waters of baptism, which destroys the forces of sin in man. The dove with the olive branch is an image of the Holy Spirit creating a new heart and spirit in us. The rainbow is a sign of reconciliation of the people with God. Let us now explore the part about the covenant. If you've been around Christians, you've probably heard of the idea of having a personal relationship with God, which could mean different things in the Bible, like having God as a friend, or your father, or maybe your teacher. But there's one particular way that the Bible talks about this relationship that you find all over. But strangely, we don't talk about it that much. And that's the idea of a partnership with God. A partnership like working alongside someone to accomplish a goal together. Right. And this is actually what you see at the beginning of the Bible. God creates this good world full of all of this potential. And then God appoints these unique creatures, humans, as his partners in bringing more and more goodness out of all that potential. But the humans don't want to partner with God. They rebel and try to create a world on their own terms. And so this broken partnership is the Bible's explanation for why we're stuck in a world of corruption and injustice and the tragedy of death. It's not like there's just one or two humans who have bailed on this relationship. In the story of the Bible, everyone has abandoned the partnership with God. So what God does is select a smaller group of people out of the many. And he makes a new partnership with them called a covenant. And in a covenant, God makes promises and then in exchange asks his partner to fulfill certain commitments. And the purpose of all of this is to somehow use this covenant relationship to renew his partnership with everybody else. Now, there are actually four times in the Old Testament that we're told God initiates a covenant relationship with Noah, Abraham, the nation of Israel, and King David. And it's through these that God is forming a covenant family into which all people will eventually be invited. So let's see how these work. The first one is with Noah. So in this story, God has just brought the flood to cleanse the world of humanity's corruption. And Noah and his family are the only ones left. And so God makes a covenant with Noah saying, listen, I know that humans will continue to be evil, but despite that, I'm not going to destroy it like this again. Instead, the earth will be this reliable place for us to work together. Great, so what does Noah have to do? Nothing. And that's what's so interesting about this first covenant is that God is promising to be faithful even though he knows humans won't be. The next time we see God make a covenant is with a man named Abraham. God chooses him, promises to bless him, give him a large family, lots of land where they can flourish. And in return, God asks Abraham to trust him and train up his family to do what is right and just. And the whole reason for this covenant is God says that somehow he's going to bring his blessing to all families of the world through this one family. So that's Abraham. 
The next time we see God make a covenant is when Abraham's family grows into the tribe of Israel. And this covenant is with the whole tribe. God asks them to obey a set of laws, which are these guidelines for living well as a community of God's partners. And if they do this, then God promises to bless them and that they will become a people who then represent him to the rest of humanity. That's the covenant with Israel. The last covenant is with King David. Yeah, the tribe of Israel has become this large nation ruled by David. And God asked David and his descendants to partner with him by leading Israel in obeying the laws and doing what is right and just. And God promises that one day, one of David's sons will come and extend God's kingdom of peace and blessing over all the nations. So those are the four covenants that God makes in order to restore his partnership with the whole world. But here's what happens. Israel breaks the covenant. They worship other gods, they allow horrible injustice, and so they lose their land and are forced off into exile. So it seems hopeless. But during this time, Israel's prophets talked about a day when God would restore these covenants in spite of Israel's failure, somehow. Yeah, they called it the new covenant. And this is actually what's so interesting about Jesus is that he's introduced into this story as the one who fulfills all of these covenant relationships. We're told that he's from the family of Abraham and so he will bring the blessings of that family to the whole world. We're told that he's the faithful Israelite who was able to truly obey the law. And we're told that he's the king from the line of David. And so he goes about extending God's kingdom of justice and peace to all. And that's really remarkable for one guy. Yeah, and what it highlights is perhaps the most surprising claim of all made about this man, that Jesus is no mere human, but rather God become human. And God did this in order to be that faithful covenant partner that we are all made to be, but have failed to be. And so through Jesus, God has opened up a way for anyone to be in a renewed partnership with him. So Jesus calls people to follow him and become part of this new covenant family. And despite their failures, Jesus is committed to making them into partners who were becoming more and more faithful. The story of the Bible ends with a vision of a fully renewed world, full of goodness and peace. And there's this renewed humanity there, partnering together with God to expand the goodness of his creation. And so the end of the Bible story is really a new beginning. The element of hope and promise is a constant reference in the Bible narratives which distinguish themselves from the stories of other cultures. God left the people with hope after the flood just like he did after the fall of Adam and Eve. Through Noah, God makes the covenant with the whole human race including you and me. As we prepare to hear the word of God, I invite you to take up a prayerful posture, put aside any distractions, and prepare yourself. Dear children, I now invite you to close your eyes and calm yourself and begin to imagine a grey sky with dark clouds. The clouds burst into rain. Hear the pitter-patter of the rain on the window sill. It's a passing shower. The rain stops and soon the sun peeps out. Now look at the sky again. It's a clear sky. White clouds float across the sky. And lo and behold, there appears a rainbow, a huge arc with its sevenfold colors, violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange, and red. And as you continue to keep your eyes closed, listen to the word of God taken from the book of Genesis. God is speaking to Noah as he looks with joy at the rainbow in the sky. Our reading from the book of Genesis, chapter 9, verses 13 to 17. 
I set my bow in the cloud and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant between me and you and every living creature of all flesh and the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh when the bow is in the clouds i will look upon it and remember the everlasting covenant between god and every living creature of all flesh that is upon the earth God said to Noah This is the sign of the covenant with which I have established between me and all the flesh that is upon the earth The word of the Lord Thanks be to God As you receive God's message of hope and promise in the silence of your hearts and smile at the rainbow through this rainbow god is calling you and me to a deeper bond of friendship imagine god is holding one end of the rainbow and you are holding the other end god and you are the two parties of this covenant of this relationship of love and trust hope and promise and if you are ever perturbed about the punishment that god meets out or an angry god just try and remember the words of the song as it plays out to us jesus love very wonderful jesus love is very wonderful jesus love is very wonderful oh wonderful love so high you can't get over it so low you can't get under it so why you can't get around it oh wonderful love jesus love is very The rainbow as we remember is a symbol of God's covenant with each of us and with all humanity. When two friends make a covenant with each other, they make many promises to each other which they will keep in order to deepen their friendship. I now invite you to draw a rainbow in your notebooks and to write on some or all of the seven colors qualities or promises of your friendship with god which you would like to keep and remember always that brings us to the end of this online session we wish you a lovely day ahead stay safe and stay blessed bye for now